Hello, I'm Jessica Costantino with AARP Massachusetts, and I want to welcome you to this Teletown Hall on behalf of the AARP Prodwatch Network. Today, we're going to be talking about how to protect yourself from scams. In just a few moments, we'll be joined by Mary Freely. She leads the Elder Justice Unit in the Attorney General's Office here in Massachusetts. Right now, we're connecting with thousands of AARP members across the state. AARP is a nonprofit, nonpartisan member organization. We've been working to promote the health and well being of older Americans for more than 60 years. If you've participated in one of these teletown halls before, you know that it's similar to a radio talk show where you have the opportunity to ask questions and get answers from, the, from our expert in real time. If you'd like to ask a question to our guest, Mary Freely, please press star three on your telephone keypad. Again, that's star three. You'll be connected with an AARP staff member who will take your name and your question, put you in the queue, and then we'll be able to get you so you can ask your question live. Again, to ask your question, please press star three. With us today is Mary Freely. You may have seen her featured in this month's AARP Bulletin. She is the head of the Elder Justice Unit at the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office. And before that, she had 25 years investigating the way companies take advantage of consumers. But she's, she is in this new role starting back in August, and she is going to be the central point of contact for Massachusetts older residents who need help from the Attorney General's office. So Mary, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to speak with ARP members from across the Commonwealth today. Welcome, um, please, please, uh, if you could say why this matters to you and what you're doing in your new role. Well, thank you, Jessica, and, and thanks to the AARP for inviting me to join you today. I'm very excited to be part of this teletown hall with all of you today to talk a little bit about the Attorney General's office and to share some information that can help uh, our listeners be informed consumers and be advocates for themselves uh, when it comes to dealing with all kinds of things that, that we face today. Uh, so, so why is this important to me? Well, here at the Attorney General's office, each week, unfortunately, our office hears from individuals who have been the targets of scams or attempts to steal personal information. And unfortunately, many of these schemes target older adults who may be at home and willing to pick up the phone uh, when, when a scammer calls. And so it's important to remember that there are things that we all can do to try to prevent and avoid becoming a, a victim to these sophisticated criminals who want to separate you from, from your money. Um, I want you to know that we have both a consumer and an elder hotline operating weekdays at the Office of the Attorney General um, to assist callers in addressing a wide range of questions and concerns. These hotlines may be your initial point of contact with our office if you have a problem you're trying to resolve. Um, and and as, as Jessica, you mentioned, Attorney General Campbell created the Elder Justice Unit to more or less be a central point of contact for the work that goes on across the office to um, assist older adults uh, in, in the Commonwealth. Great. We really appreciate your efforts on this. The AARP Fraud Watch Network is a free resource for everyone. And what we know is that research shows that if you know about a specific scam, you're about 80% less likely to engage with it. And if you do, um, you're 40% less likely to lose money once you have this information because we know it's uh, sharing that sensitive information that many times scammers really uh, push people to do. So again, if you are just joining us, you are on an AARP teletown hall 
with Mary Freely of the Attorney General's Office here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We're talking about scams today and what you can do to protect yourself. If you have a question for Mary or if you have a comment or something you'd like to share, please press star three on your telephone keypad. You will be connected with an AARP staff person who will take your question and note your name. We'll get you in the queue, and then we're going to have you ask your questions. And while we're waiting for people to do that, Mary, can you talk a little bit about um, if someone has a, uh, if they think that they have been a victim of a scam here in Massachusetts, what do you recommend they do? Well, there's there's a, a few things that you can do. First of all, um, you should report the fraud to the local police department um, as you would any other crime. Um, if you, it, th- there are resources that can assist you um, in in directing where your where your efforts should go. So, for example, if it was a postal scam you can contact the the postal inspector's office and see if there are resources that they can bring to bear to help you either get get your money or or, um, stop the fraud from from continuing. Um, You should also report the fraud to the Attorney General's office and the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, They have a a website called reportfraud.ftc.gov, and you could file a consumer complaint with the Office of the Attorney General. Um, that's right on our website. Reporting fraud, right. it's important because it helps law enforcement and community partners identify new scams and respond to emerging threats. Um, the Federal Trade Commission offers a website with helpful guidance about the steps you can take if you've paid someone um, that you think might be a scammer or gave a scammer your personal information or access to your computer or phone. And I'd also just mention again, the AARP's Fraud Watch, Fraud Watch Network also provides wonderful free resources to assist individuals in spotting scams and offering guidance from specialists. Well, thank you for sharing that. I too was going to share information about AARP's Fraud Watch Network, so you beat me to it. But if people are trying to find that resource, you can go to aarp.org slash Fraud Watch Network. And what do they do at the Fraud Watch Network in particular? It helps you to stay informed. They can provide some support. And they also have the fraud pre- prevention resources that I think are very helpful for people. That not only are you able to arm yourself with information if you have been a victim, but hopefully to do it in advance to prevent becoming a victim of a scam or fraud. Now, Ted, I see that we have a lot of people in the queue, and I'm wondering if we could get right to taking some of these questions that callers have for Mary. Who's up first? Hey, Jess, let's go to Howard. He's in East Hampton. Good morning, Howard. Good morning, Howard. What is your question for Ms. Freely? Yes, I was just curious about what our government's doing for all the fraud that's coming through the phones these days. I mean, I, just this morning I must have gotten at least seven of them, okay? You know they're scams. Um, I, I'm an ex-police officer, by the way, and I've taken a lot of these calls when I was there. Um, uh, fortunately, I do know a scam when it's being shown. Um, a lot of these people that I, do, I used to get in there are elderly people, that are getting scammed by phone calls. Is what can we do about this? Well, Howard, thank you for your question and thank you for uh, being alert to this. Mary, do you have some suggestions for what people can do if they're getting scam calls? I know that a lot of times now on, on your phone caller ID, it will say scam alert. Exactly. I, I, I guess I would suggest that if you, have, if you are getting a phone call from particularly from a number that you don't recognize, let it go to your voicemail. Don't pick it up. Um, unfortunately, even with efforts to control robocalls and other um, scam uh, types of calls, there is 
you know, th- there is a lot that gets through. Um, our government has tried to address robocalls, and there are federal laws on the books that, that try to address uh, these issues. But it's very simple for someone to spoof uh, a phone number and pretend to be your credit card or your bank or a police department. And unfortunately, that's that's how a lot of these calls come through. So best to recognize, um, you know, prevention is, is, is the big key here. Best to recognize uh, what you can do to protect yourself. Hang up the phone if you think you're being, uh, if it's a scam. Call someone back at a number that you know to be true. You know, if your credit card company is purporting to ask you for information out of the blue, tell them you'll call them back and then call back a number that you know is accurate, the number on the back of your credit card or your bank's, you know, advertised telephone number, that type of thing. Those are all excellent tips, Mary. You mentioned that there are ways that the federal government has taken a couple of steps. One of them is the National Do Not Call Registry. So people can go and register their phone number with do not call.gov. Um, and what you can do is be put on a list where hopefully that will eliminate some of the calls coming into you. But as you mentioned, these scammers are very good at figuring out how to get around all of the systems. Just when we think that we've got a uh, something in place to help us, the technology maybe, um, the technological advances, the scams keep coming. So really important to not be um, – not be taken in by that urgency or someone saying you must give me your credit card information or give your personal information, really protecting that as an individual is critical. And also the same goes for while Howard asked about the phone piece, I, I think we're hearing that people are also having this happen with email and with texts. So, uh, the same principles apply. Do not click on things that you cannot verify are links that you want to uh, be directed to. And don't answer those texts if you really don't know who they are. Um, those are two things that we are hearing a lot of. Again, I want to remind callers, this is an AARP Teletown Hall with Mary Freely of the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office. We're talking about frauds and scams. If you have a question or a comment and you'd like to make that live, please press star three on your telephone keypad. You'll be connected with an AARP staff member who will take your question and your comment and they'll put you in the queue. And I wanna get right to the next person. We know that scams, and frauds are affecting people in Massachusetts, and we have callers from across the Commonwealth. Ted, who's our next caller with a question for Ms. Freely? Why don't we go to Pete? Pete's calling us from Marshfield. Morning. Morning. Good morning, Pete. What is your question or comment? Yeah, I want to find find out how you uh, can tell uh, if, the, if the person is really what they say they are and who they say they are. Uh, actually, I've been around this for some time myself, and I can pick off a lot of people, but uh, sometimes you, you, you just don't know. And so uh, what's the best way to make them give up information that, that's that's real? And if, if, if they say they're going to give you a copy of some documentation, these people know how to make official looking documents as well. So how do you protect us off of that? Well, so many good questions there, Pete. Mary, do you have some, some tips for all of our listeners on this? Yes. Um, thank you for the question, Pete. I, I, again, um, if you're not expecting a call from your bank or, you know, another uh, financial... No, the, 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 uh, just, these are you usually... People who say you've 
won some kind of sweepstakes. Now, people, you might say just because they say that means automatically they're a scammer, but that's not necessarily true. Okay, it could be the live, could be the live situation. So, I mean, don't don't assume because it's a particular subject matter that it's automatically a scammer or it's not a scammer. I mean, you, you have to have other ways. Okay, so go ahead. Okay, well, I would say offers of a prize or a gift uh, that promises a long, a large payout. If you, as a winner, uh, just send money to pay the taxes or the fees, I think that is a red flag for a scam. I would avoid that at all costs. Um, also, things like Bitcoin, offers of investments that you don't understand. We know there are scams out there involving those types of investment. So if someone asks you to go to the... Go to the local gas station, which has a Bitcoin ATM, where you can just, you know, transfer your cash into Bitcoin. Avoid that. Don't do that. Operate through only legitimate resources. And, and you know, that would be, you know, people that, that aren't directing you to go to the, the, the local ATM at the gas station. Um, you know, I, I don't know what to say other than, you know, the, the telephone companies have put in alerts uh, for, for, you know, this is a potential scam. I believe those. 99% they are, or they're, they're a telemarketing um, firm that, that, you know, you, you didn't sign up for. Uh, you can contact companies, you know, that, that are in existence yourself, and you can always, you know, try to check things like, uh, fraud watch network uh, lists of types of scams if you're contacted for an investment or you know a prize winning to see if 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 it is um you know even if you think it's it's a legitimate uh offer it may not actually be Mary I think you've hit on a couple of really important pieces to this discussion most of the time, the old adage that if it seems too good to be true, it probably is, I think still holds. Um, uh, and people need to be on guard. Scammers are trying every which way to get your information and your personal sensitive uh, identifying information and your money. So they are often looking for cash payments. You mentioned about gift cards. Sometimes we know that they are trying to get money transfers or asking for cryptocurrency. We've heard that one. Um, and also the money transfer apps, the, um, you know, the, the peer-to-peer type of Venmo cash app type of thing. We've heard people being victimized there as well. If we are, um, if we are getting these calls, Beyond reporting them to the Attorney General's office and maybe checking with the AARP Fraud Watch Network, which we have a free helpline there, 1-877-908-3360, what other things should people be on guard for? What are the telltale signs that scammers are trying to use to persuade people to give up their sensitive information and money? Well, um, I would say that if you get an unsolicited call from an official sounding government agency that asks for things like your social security or tax identification number, that's most likely a scam. The government is not going to call you asking for this information. They have that information. So if some if someone's calling you looking for that, please don't respond. Um, you also could, if you get a request, uh, you know, we've heard a lot about the grand grandchild scams and the grandparent scam. You get a request to wire money immediately because a grandchild or another family member is in jeopardy. Um, that is usually a scam, and you're usually caught up in the moment out of concern with a grandchild or family member, uh, and, and many people get caught up with that sense of urgency. What I would suggest is take a moment, try to reach your grandchild, 99% uh, certain that they'll be fine and that this scam, uh, you know, preys upon someone's good good wishes and good feelings for their family member. Um, other 
sort of red flags if you if you get a request, Jessica, you mentioned a request to use a gift card um, to to pay a debt or to pay something that's owed. You know, legitimate businesses or government agencies do not operate by asking you to pay to go out and purchase gift cards and give you know the, the information on the back of the gift card. Those things are very hard to trace, and once the money is gone, it's usually very difficult or impossible to recover. Um, so, so those are some of the things that, that I've heard about, you know, even recently that uh, I'd like to pass along just so people will be aware of that. Thank you. But arming yourselves with information is critical so that you hopefully do not become a victim and rather you're preventing it from ever happening at the beginning. As you mentioned, trying to recoup your money once it's gone is very difficult. Um, and so we do have someone who who has been a victim of the grandparent, grandchild scam. And I'm wondering, Ted, if you could go to that caller, please, so that they could share their experience. Certainly. Let's get a lead. She's called us from Wittensville. Lean. Hi, good morning, Aline. Yes, could you please uh, share your experience or ask your question? Yes, um, I get a, a lot. And when they do it, I have on my phone a block. I can block the call. Another thing, too, they ask for SOLA, and I know, and then if you answer it, the first thing you know, if you answer it and click one, then it clicks again. You know it's a scam. And I've had it where grandma, yeah, I'm in trouble. Well, I just tell them, you got in trouble? You get yourself out of trouble. Bingo. I hang up. I don't give any information at all, at all. I get police. I get fire. And I just tell them, sorry, I don't do things over the phone. Bye. Boom. I block that. So I block a lot of the numbers. Even on my um, cell phone, I block the numbers too. If I don't know it, I, I ring it, and, and then the operator comes on and says, sorry, that is not listed. So you know right then it, it's uh So the numbers I don't um, know, I just block. Just block them. That's it. But I well, Thank also, you, Aline, for, for sharing I that. Also, yep. I just um, want to ask one more question. I used to use do not call list. It works, but it doesn't work at all. They have governments got to work a little harder. Tell them have to work a little harder. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing your insights um, and other callers. Just as a reminder, if you've just joined this call, you're on an AARP Teletown Hall about frauds and scams and hopefully some tips so that you can prevent being a victim of one. We are joined by Mary Freely of the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office. She has uh, all sorts of insights because this is uh, her area of expertise. And so I'm, I'd like to go um, to the next caller, but before we do that, Mary, do you have anything you'd like to add from the last caller about how to address when people are having uh, random calls come to their home. It sounds like that last caller did a lot of blocking and hanging up. Anything else from your perspective? Yes, I think that was great advice from, from Aline. I, I agree that you can just hang up and you can block calls. Um, the do not call list, you do have to re-up your number for, for, for um for various reasons uh, at, at, at times, but I think if you don't know who's calling you, if you get a call for solar or, or for to purchase your home or, you know, any of those types of things, if you're not interested, just hang up. You don't have to be, you don't have to explain yourself. You can just hang up. Also, Arlene mentioned, you know, getting calls or requests for solicitation from charities or, or other organizations. If you receive a re request to give to a charity, first of all, don't pay in cash. Don't don't pay anyone that says, "Okay, we'll come and pick up, you know, your your twenty dollars." 
and never feel pressured to giving on the spot. So if you're not familiar with the charity, you can request in additional information. You can look up the charity online at the uh, Attorney General's Office of Public Charities website or other websites like the Charity Navigator or GuideStar. Um, you also can ask the fundraiser how much of your donation will actually go to the charity. We issue a report every year, and unfortunately, a lot of times, it's a very small percentage of your donation. So I would just mention those couple of things, um, and thank you, uh, Aline, for that information. Thank you, Mary. I think what you've hit on here is listening to those messages with intent, not reacting with an emotional response, and making sure that you're pausing to think through, is this something that you want to give money to before you press a, a response right away or click a link or don't send that unless you really want to send your money to that particular organization or charity. We have another person in the queue with a good question, I'm certain. And who shall we go to next? Why don't we go with David, who's calling us from Lexington, about a computer issue. All righty. Let's hear from David of Lexington. David, what is your comment or question? Hi. Yes. Uh, well, I was scammed several months ago uh, when I was on my laptop. Uh, I understood that no matter what happens, I, I shouldn't give anybody – any information. So this this was a totally different type of scam. It uh, it popped. Uh, a, I got a warning that um, from my, supposedly from Microsoft that I was uh, I, I was uh, doing some uh, web searching and uh, I had hit a contaminated site or something like that. And they said don't uh, don't uh, reboot your computer, uh, call this number. It was an 800 number. And um, from then on in, it all seemed so really on the up and up. And I used to, I used to work in software, so uh, I was trying to be cautious, but these guys were, were pretty good. And, uh, you know, I talked with a, a guy at Microsoft. The only information that he has, he said, well, you know, we want to see if maybe you had some financial uh, inf you know, somebody's maybe trying to get some financial information so we'll we'll check your uh, finances so uh, he said what's a uh, what's a phone uh, a, a number of your bank that was the only information I gave them to make a long story short I called the bank but I didn't call the bank they said I'll put you on a secure line we'll call the bank and um, I, I wasn't talking to somebody at the bank. I was actually talking to another scammer. And in the end, uh, I took uh, cash out of my account. And I did go to one of those Bitcoin machines. And the reason I, uh, you know, they had what they had said is, um, don't tell the te teller or the manager because they, in fact, could be the ones who have... Uh, uh, have this withdrawal like a I don't know but twenty one thousand dollar pending withdrawal that we were trying to change so they were going to I was to go uh, to go to a place where there was going to be a temporary account and that temporary account was through the Bitcoin so I I put the money in there and then uh, the rest is history I, I I eventually started thinking about it that night and and uh, realized that I probably was scammed, and I called the bank, another bank, the other bank that we have money in, and, and they uh, confirmed that. So my my oh. my question is, uh, you know, when you get these warnings on your on your uh, computer, or I guess you could say could be your cell phone too. Uh, what do you do? How do you know it's legit? What's uh, what's the step? What steps do you take? David, first of all, I'm so sorry to hear about your experience. Um, and and I think that you have, have um, identified a few pieces here. I, I'm hoping Mary can address a couple of them, and I might have a couple additional tips for folks. So, Mary, why don't you start first? 
Yes. Um, David, I'm sorry that that happened to you, and and it's it's not uh, something that, that I haven't heard about previously. Um, the first thing I would say is imposter scams are prevalent. Imposter scams meaning someone calls you pretending to be or, or, or uses your computer to communicate with you, um, pretending to be, you know, your police department, Microsoft, uh, the IRS, uh, Social, Social Security. Government agencies are not going to contact you, and Microsoft generally will not contact you. So the first thing that I would do is is try to get away from that that person and call up Microsoft yourself at a number that you find or or you know a, go to a computer tech store that's a legitimate business that can help you get to the bottom of of why you're getting a pop up on your computer uh purporting to be a scam. Um, you know, they control the phone numbers. They can d- direct you to their colleague in the other room. Um, the scammers are very sophisticated, and they do know what to say. Um, the second thing I would say is Bitcoin is, you know, I don't understand Bitcoin. I, you know, I would not uh, get involved in, in a transaction that I didn't know how the mechanisms worked. They're incredibly difficult to trace or to, to, um, to recover. So if if you don't understand it, I, I would try to avoid it. Um, yeah, I would I would have to say that, you know, looking back, uh, it seemed, you know, and people would talk to me, you know, well, that you know, you went to a gas station where there was a Bitcoin and you put in, you know, thousands of dollars into the into the machine. But the way they ca- uh, coached, every, uh, cashed the way it was, was that uh, there was some corruption at the bank. Mm-hmm. And they we had to create they had to create a temporary account that the bank uh, would not know about or the people at the bank would not know about and that was my thinking. Yeah. So I, yeah, so you know I saw the article in the bulletin and, and boy that rang about. Fortunately, I gave a certain amount of money one Bitcoin, but they only took like nine thousand dollars at one one hit. I went to another one, and I did get uh, seemed to be more modern. I got an error saying, "You, know, we think you're scammed," <laughs> and, but yeah. I kept trying to put it in, saying, "No, no, I'm not. I'm not scammed. I'm, I'm putting this in." Fortunately, they didn't allow it in, so okay. that was positive. But yeah, that's well, the big point. The, the scammers know exactly what to say, and and again, they try to catch you up in a sense of urgency, so that you're not able to pause and think and and you know they they create a sense that if you don't do it now your money's going to be gone uh but but in fact if you go through with the transaction your money will be gone the other the other thing that that is um uh, important to to take note of is when they said don't tell the teller or the manager if you're going you know to to to, to somewhere they're actually the ones that can help you and they're the ones that can can uh, potentially stop a fraudulent transaction. So that the the desire to keep things secret, even in, with the grandparent scam, oh, don't tell. You know, you know, they they try to get you to, to to not tell the the you know the parent of the child if you're the grandparent. They want to keep you in their little bubble, and and that form of secrecy is what ultimately allows them to be successful. So if you think you might be scammed, try to hang up or get off the line and try to talk to a trusted advisor, talk to one of your children or talk to your neighbor who who might have gone through a similar um situation before you act. That's that's some right. of the advice that I would give. Well, the hardest part is tips. Thank it's, it's thank so you. emotional. Yes. It's, it's, uh, that the, and you're they caught, want caught up in it and, and it's hard to uh, emotionally get out and call somebody else. You know, they, they, it's a trap, essentially. Absolutely. David, you are right on there. They are trying to get you in an emotional state. It actually has a term. It's called under the ether. They are trying to get you to a place where you are responding with emotions rather than thinking through, should I be doing this? Uh, one catchy little thing that has stuck in my mind is um, skip the click. If you get an email or a text and someone says you have to click on this so that you can get to your next, you know, 
you're not saying, skip that. Don't do that. Um, check with the legitimate business, as Mary recommended. And then here's one that I think is probably helpful, and maybe people do this, but really making sure that you are up to date and set your um, protections on your devices. So making sure that you have all of your protections through your computer or a, a VPN, if you're using a public Wi-Fi, that you're doing it in the safest way, really making sure that you have the most security of all your systems so that people can't get through at the front end. Again, prevention is what we're hoping is uh, what results. So, so many callers in the queue. Let's go to another one. Who do we have next, Ted? Let's go to David. He's calling us from Somerville. Hello, David. Yeah, uh, hi. Am I on? Hi, David. You're hi. on. What's your comment or question for Mary? Uh, you don't have the, the 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 information I gave to your questioner, but I, I'll start. I'll, I'll just describe. I, I was contacted by someone saying, with a sort of uh, foreign accent, saying he was calling from Publishers Clearinghouse, and that I had won eighteen point one million dollars, plus seven thousand dollars a week for life, plus a Mercedes car. That they were going to deliver all this within a few hours if I was home. And I was, I should be home, but that I needed to purchase a $500 gift card from a local pharmacy. Mm -hmm. I said, why do I need to do this if you're giving me all this money? Uh, 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 can't you just deduct the $500 from the first $7,000 payment? He said, no, 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 we can't do that, at which point I became, uh, I became even more suspicious, and uh, having been scammed, a number of years earlier with a similar gift, an analogous gift card scheme, I hung up, and they called me back, and I didn't answer, and that was it. I'm assuming that this was, in fact, a scam and that I hadn't won $18.1 million and so forth. Because, uh, at any rate, my question is, if I had purchased the gift card, can you explain what they would have done with that information that would have allowed them to to scam me for more. Sure. Um, David, first of all, I want to commend you for recognizing that that was most likely a scam. You, It's very unlikely that you would have won $18.1 million plus a new car and all of these things. Um, it's, it's a frequent scam that we hear that people are told, oh, you've won this prize. If only you have, if only you'll pay these fees and these charges, um, you know, you have to pay taxes or you have to pay the delivery fee or you have to pay something else. If you legitimately won a prize, you're not going to have to pay up front for, for, for that charge. The way that, that the scammers get you to um, scam you is by when you go and you buy the $500 gift card from, you know, where, wherever it may be, whether it's the Apple store or the you know, the local CVS, um, you then call the, the scammers back or they call you back most likely and they ask you to recite the numbers that are on the back of that card. And once you recite those numbers, it's as if you had turned over the $500 in cash because they can immediately go online, make a purchase using that gift card and its information and then that gift card becomes you know, used, used up. So I, I didn't lose the five hundred dollars. And and you've already paid cash for the gift card or, or put it on your credit card. Um, you know, to purchase that gift card. I guess yeah. you you have to pay cash. So that's the way it's. Oh, done. I have to pay cash. I can't do it with a uh, credit card. That's right. That's right. Uh huh. I'll catch it. So and the, it, would the, the damage have been limited to the five hundred dollars, or would it have been worse? Well, if you didn't give them any other financial information, um, you know, that, that should be the extent of it. Uh, sometimes the scammers are, are looking for financial information, you know, your usernames, your password, um, yeah. account yeah. numbers, or, or particularly one that I was almost caught up in was um, a texted security code 
they want you, you know, I was on the phone. We, we thought we were on the phone with a credit card company because that's what it said on the line. And yeah. they were they were talking about a fraudulent activity and, and, again, caught up with the urgency of it. And, and they were asking for the number that they had just texted. And, and in fact, it was a number from the bank that if I gave it to them, they would have had access to to the to the credit card. Um, yeah, I think, uh, as I recall, what they what they said was, after I purchased the gift card, they said, and we'll need to deposit the money into your bank account. So you have to give us your bank account yeah. number. Yeah. Is, that's my memory. It's a, it's a vague memory because it's a unpleasant experience, but I think that's what they did, right. and then then they began to manipulate, they, they actually zeroed out my savings, my, uh, I don't know whether it was a savings or checking account, and, and I said, well, you, you can't, you have to pay us this amount, or and I said, well, I don't want to do that, and then they zeroed out my savings account, which was, you know, like $2,000 or something like that at that point, uh, and I said, well, you, you have to give it back, and uh, I never got it back. And I eventually hung up. I went to the police. The police said, if that happens, just hang up. Exactly. If they get, in, if they get into your bank account, just hang up. But uh, I was so, you know, I, I did not let, it didn't go any further than, I just said, I don't, it's too good to be true, I'm sorry, goodbye, have a good day and leave me alone, you know, kind of thing. Uh, David, you have, that you have. Day. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, Thank I, I, you, I just, David, for, sh- yeah. for sharing that. Um, you've you've pointed out a couple of key features. One, gift cards are not a legit, legitimate form of payment for things. And your approach to not do that and not give out your personal information and just hang up in not click on other additional links is is excellent. So that's great. We I want to remind people that you are on an AARP Teletown Hall with Mary Freely of the Elder Justice Unit at the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office. We're talking about frauds and scams and how uh, people can protect themselves, what they can do if they are a victim, and uh, most importantly, how to prevent that from ever happening. If you have a question or a comment and would like to get in the queue, press star three on your telephone keypad and you'll be placed in. We have a lot of people in the queue, so I'd like to go right to the next person. Ted, who do we have next? Let's go to Rita. Rita's calling us from Everett. Hello, Rita. Hi, how are you? <clears throat> Hello? Excellent, Rita. What is, your, what is your question? Well, I've been scammed by contractors. They came, they did a great job on my roof, then I was going to have them do additional work, I had checked to find out if they were licensed and insured on their website. Come to find out in the middle of the second job, the city came and shut them down and they left with my money. I went to the police department. Um, I did the uh, Better Business Bureau, the Attorney General's office, and I haven't got any money back. Is there any hope for me to get any uh, relief from this? Well, Debbie. Mary, do you have some suggestions? We haven't heard about on this call yet the contractor scams, but we know they're out there. What are your recommendations for Rita? Sure. I'm not sure exactly um, how they were shut down midway through the process um, or, and whether that involved the uh, involvement of uh, the consumer and biz, consumer affairs and business regulation. No, I did not call con- consumer p- affairs till they were gone. The city shut them down because they did not get the permits that they told me that they got. Well, I mean, I, I, I would just encourage people to know, again, the license licensure of your uh, home improvement contractor is very important. They're required to be licensed in, in Massachusetts. The, I, the the agency that I was mentioning uh, a moment ago, Consumers Affairs and Business Regulations, they actually license um, contractors and they have a registry of, you know, consumer complaints and, and you can also contact them to see if your contractor has complaints against them. 
that's some of the work that can be done up front. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what to suggest to you, Rita, um, you know, after the fact on that, but, but you know, often there's, there's an opportunity to, to file, whether it's a small claims action against your contractor or whether it's a, another type of lawsuit to try to recover the money, but that obviously is not an ideal um, way to proceed. And you have a half half completed project and and you're out the full amount of money, it sounds like. Yeah, and it cost us money to take down what they did because it wasn't right. And we're almost at the end of it being redone right now by legitimate contractors. Yeah. So. Rita, thank you for sharing your experience. I'm sorry to hear that you were, were taken by these um, we know that there are a lot of crooked companies or outright scams. If people are knocking on your door and suggesting that they can help you with a, with a, you know, repair damages, sometimes after a storm we see that. If you hear that they need cash up front, if you hear that you need to give them the money right away to secure them, Anytime you are feeling like you have to make a decision very quickly and they are pressuring you, these are tactics that scammers use, and we have seen them repeatedly. One quick way to see if scammers are in your area, you can check the AARP Fraud Watch Network. We actually have a map that shows different types of scams that we're hearing in different communities. And you can also register yours. The last speaker talked about the sweepstakes or the lottery scam. If someone is asking you to pay to get that sweepstakes, that is a scam. So we have a couple of things, tactics that we know are scams and to be on the lookout for. Ted, there's a big queue for others who want to share. Who shall we go to next? Let's go to Martha. She lost some money last year. Hello, Martha. She's calling from where? Hi, Martha. Hi, Martha. Hi. Why don't you share with us well, and with I've had a, I've been tre- I've been treated to all of these scams except the best the Bitcoin or whatever that one is. But I brought this one on myself. There was advertisement for Crepe Race on TV. I signed up for two months and said I would pay for two months. That was the end of it. I got the first two months packages of this uh, cream that's supposed to take away the crepes in your arms and everything. Then I, I'm away most of the time in the summer, but from March until September, they charged me, and I did not realize that because I wasn't checking at home. And I received another package in September. I just sent that one right back. Then I called my credit card. They told me they they charged me every month from May till uh, through September, and they sent me something like seventeen dollars. And each thing they sent in the summer was almost a hundred. It was either ninety eight something or ninety nine something. And so I lost about six hundred dollars. And I have never heard of anybody calling from the ad on a TV before Christmas to order something to have that, to have lost that money. I just wondered. Well, thank, you that, Martha, thank you for sharing that, Martha. Thank you for sharing that, Martha. Mary, I think this one is a little bit different. This one is is someone being proactive to get a product that I guess is a legitimate product, but then having to be, a recurring. Yeah payment that is taken out. Could you address that, Mary? Sure. It sounds like, you know, you might have signed up for, you know, a trial offer or, or you know, you no, wanted to. No, I, I signed up for two months, uh, you... January and February. Well. That's all I, I agreed to pay. Yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes there's fine print <laughs> either in the, you know. The, the, well, I, the I just did it over the phone to the yep. TV. Yeah. But it, with the first, you know, with the first um, solicitation, they they might have asked, you know, a, a, an odd question that they take as as you consenting to a recurring order. Um, I think what's important is you should 
always, you know, try to check your statements to make sure you don't have any recurring payments, even if they're, you know, a small charge, you know, a dollar fifty or dollar forty nine. If you don't know what it's for, you need to call the bank and find out what that charge is for so that you can stop it. Um, I had a, a, a charge on, on a bank statement for many months that that resulted from me searching on the web for a phone number. And that phone number signed me up for <laughs> the recurring service of, of, you know, being able to access their phone records. Um, I only wanted one phone number, and it ended up costing quite a bit of money. Um, so, so I would just suggest trial offers um, often convert, or, or an offer for a free service often converts to a charge on your credit card. So you need to look at those very carefully. Um, I will say that there have been efforts by the Federal Trade Commission and others to make it easier to cancel subscription services like you know, a recurring purchase every month. So so uh, if you wanted to file a, a consumer complaint with our office, um, we'd be happy to, to, to take a look at that. And, and uh, Martha, you know, may, maybe we can get some of your, your funds back for the product. Thank you, Mary. Thanks for those tips. Ted, we are getting close to the top of the hour. Can you uh, put someone else in the queue to get maybe one more question or two in before we have to end. Sure thing. Let's go to Linda, who's calling us from our Great Barrington. Hello, Linda. Hello. My question. Hi, Linda. Is, hello. Um, I have seen on TV um, <clears throat> a website, findmassmoney.gov, <clears throat> to go in there and, you know, with your name to see if you have pending money. Um, is that, because it's advertised on TV, is, is that a scam? Well, thank you for that question, Linda. Mary? Yeah, thank you, Linda. That is actually a legitimate <laughs> uh, offering of the, the Treasury, uh, the, the, the Treasurer's Office in Massachusetts. And one, one thing you can do just to make sure you're, you know, you're going to a legitimate site is go to the web and get on the Treasurer's Office. Get, get to, you know, Google Mass, Massachusetts Office of the Treasurer, and you will probably find a very big uh, button for, for the, you know, find your, your, your money. And, and all you have to do is type in your name, and, and you can um, see if, if there's any, you know, lost check or insurance check or some, something that the registry is holding and, and that you can claim. So that is a legitimate uh, resource. It has been on television because that's the way people can, you know, learn about the service, learn about, you know, the, the possibility that they have they have money. You might have also seen, you know, in years past, there'd be big newspaper ads with everyone's name listed, and you could just look up right there. But uh, that is one that is legitimate. Thank you, Mary, for clarifying that. We we know that criminals create these very legitimate looking sites online, and um, you know they ask you to just put this search in and and click the link, and then they are installing malicious software onto your computer without you even knowing. We've had similar questions in the queue. We're not going to be able to get to them all. Things like. What about the Census Bureau asking you to do a survey or Medicare? Is this the Medicare plan for me? Should I click on this one or should I call for that? Um, picking up my fake package. Can you get my package up? You know, this package has been delivered. Can you click on this link to set up your delivery? And then, of course, the old one that we hear often, which is Social Security or the IRS and you need to call them back or they're calling you and you have to provide information right away. Um, before we wrap up, Mary, do you have comments on any or all of those types of scams and frauds? Uh, yes, they're all out there, particularly the package ones. You know, now that we all have smartphones or many of us have smartphones, we get texts and uh, you might get a text from, you know, saying there's something wrong with this address 
click here to, to, to make sure your package gets delivered? Well, I know I'm not expecting a package, so just do not click on things like that. Um, you know, call up numbers that you find yourself. Don't just don't just follow along to um, you know a, a, a Medicare website. Look up what what the correct site might be, and be aware of um, the the site that you're getting on to. Look at the spelling and make sure that that it it uh, appears to be a legitimate uh, site. Um, I guess that's all I'd say. I think you, you covered a lot of it yourself, um, uh, Jessica. But but we're not going to you know hear from Social Security looking for for your Social Security number. They have that. Same with the IRS. They have they they know where to find you and they have your information. Um, they're not going to be calling you on the phone and asking for your information. Thank you so much for that reminder. We are nearing the end of today's call. As a reminder, we have been speaking with Mary Freely of the Elder Justice Unit at the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office. We've been talking about frauds and scams, and we want to make sure that people are, have the most information to prevent being a victim, but also if you are a victim, what can you do? So a reminder that the AARP Fraud Watch Network has a free helpline, the number there, is 877-908-3360. I want to right now say thank you to everyone for participating in today's Teletown Hall on identity theft, scams, and fraud. Thank you for joining us. And Mary, any last comments or closing statements that you'd like to share with people before we have to wrap this up? Uh, I would just like to say thank you for participating in today's call because you're taking the steps that you you need basically to protect yourselves um, by learning about and recognizing the warning signs of a scam. Uh, an older adult can feel empowered to hang up the phone on a, a scammer or to ignore an email solicitation or and avoid being taken in by these very convincing but fraudulent schemes. So I just want to thank you all for participating today. Thank you so much. Whether it's over the phone, through the mail, online, at your front door, those scam artists are out there, they are always looking for new ways to get you and your loved ones to open up your wallets. The Fraud Watch Network is a great way to learn about the most effective ways to protect yourself from identity theft and fraud. And if you haven't had a chance yet, you can go to our helpline toll free and add your address. So that's 1-877-908-3360. If it's easier for you to sign up online, you can also do that at aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork. Finally, every month right here in Massachusetts, we hold what's called Fraud Talk Tuesday. Second Tuesday of the month, we get together virtually and we hear about different scams that are going on right here in the Commonwealth. The next one is May 14th. What scammers want your driver's license and the 10 worst things to carry in your wallet? These sessions are packed with great information. If you'd like to participate in one of them, go to aarp.org ma. And thank you, everybody, for participating in this discussion on this important topic. We apologize if we weren't able to get to every question, and I know we weren't. There were so many good ones. Thank you again, and have a great day.